Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Tyler the Gentleman. And for all y'all that want a piece of One Piece, welcome to Wano Piece. Before we even start this video, I want to give a shout out to the Wano Piece Pirate Crew for liking this video before it even starts. If you want to be a member of the Wano Piece Pirate Crew, hit that subscribe button below. Do it! Just do it! Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Wano underscore Peace for One Piece memes and updates on the channel. We also are posting One Piece cosplay and dope One Piece artwork, so be sure to submit yours. This week, we are recapping chapters 321 through 330. We're moving right along. Okay, so when we last left off, they met Admiral Aokiji, right? And he froze Nico Robin, and in order to thaw her out, they had to put warm water on her. They had to put water on her so that way she would thaw out naturally. Because if they did anything too fast, she would break. And if you break, that's it. Luffy is fighting Admiral Aokiji mano y mano, right? So basically, it's an agreement to where Admiral Aokiji can only fight him. And if he'll break the if he breaks the agreement, it will be just kind of dishonorable. So he agreed to fight Luffy one-on-one, -on -one, meaning he can't go after the other the other members of his crew today or right now. Admiral Aokiji freezes Luffy, then he leaves. He says he had a message from Smoker, but doesn't even give him the message because he said it was stupid. And then he said he owed him one for his work in Alabasta. He feels like they're even now. Okay, before Admiral Aokiji leaves, he says that his next, uh, the next island on his log post is Water 7. This is an island where they have the best ships makers, the best carpenters. This is where the best ships come out of. He also says that this means he's getting closer to Marine headquarters, which also means that Straw Hat Pirates are also getting close to Marine headquarters. So I wonder what's gonna happen when they get there or pass through there. I'm assuming there's gonna be a ton of Marines there. So they end up thawing out Luffy and Nico Robin. Everybody's okay. And then um, they head on to the next island. On their way to that island, they actually meet a place, uh, or they get to a place where they find out there's a train that goes on the water, which is pretty cool. It's weird looking at first because you don't see it, but it's a train that goes on the water because the tracks are just below the water. What leads them to this place is a frog. They're following a frog that is swimming like freestyle, you know. It's just crazy, but it's a frog. And then the frog gets hit by the train. And they're like, oh snap, the frog got hit by the train. But the reason the frog gets hit by the train is because the frog likes to test its battle strength against the train. So it always gets in front of the train. Which isn't such a good idea, it seems, because it keeps losing that fight. They meet Kokoro, the station master, and her granddaughter, Chim Chimney, and they have a pet rabbit named Gonberry. So, uh, they just kind of explain to them, you know, what the train, go where the train goes, and all that kind of stuff. But then she also tells them that Water Seven is the next, uh, the next island, and it's actually got the best carpenters. Luffy and the crew know they need a carpenter in order to keep their ship intact, keep it repaired the right way. So they're gonna, they decide to go to Water Seven to find a man named Iceberg, who is said to be the best carpenter. Luffy's gonna try and get him to join his crew. So they head towards Seven. Now, Kokoro told them not to get lost and to watch out for Marines when they head to Water Seven because it's a place that even the world government goes to to get their ships made or uh, fixed up. When they get to Water Seven, everyone is directing them on where to go and they don't seem to be afraid that they are pirates. Um, so there must be someone here who we find is actually the carpenters themselves that hold it down and don't take any crap from pirates. They put the whooping on this, uh, the big, the big helmet pirates, whole squad real quick. And just all carpenters rocking out, taking out these pirates because the pirates decided they didn't want to pay for the repairs that these carpenters had done for their ship. They're known as the Gorilla or Gorilla Company. And uh, their leader is Iceberg, the guy that Luffy and his crew are looking for to fix their ship. Before
before they get the ship fixed, they have to exchange the gold for actual money. So they are heading to appraiser. Luffy, Nami, and Usopp are headed to an appraiser. So they get on an animal called a bull. It kind of looks like a seahorse. Uh, and basically, since this is a water town, Water 7 is a water town, um, they use the bull. It's a boat put on the back of the bull, and it uh, swims through the town, you know, through little canals and stuff. Up, it can swim upstream, everything, because it's very, a very, very strong swimmer. And they get to the appraiser, they get 300 million berry, and then they head to where the ship's people are. On their way, they notice a lot of uh, high class looking people wearing masks. And uh, we find out later from Nico Robin that there's a uh, there's a an island nearby that's having some sort of uh, party or holiday festival where these people wear these masks and that's why a lot of people at Water 7 have their masks on. So while everyone else is doing what they gotta do, you know, going shopping, Sanji's looking for food, things to buy for the ship. I think it's real cool how Sanji uh, is so passionate about being a cook, a chef. You know what I mean? Like he, every island they stop at, he's looking for something else he can chef up. And I think that's the perfect cook you would wanna have on your ship. You know what I mean? It's somebody that's really passionate about what they do, so that's cool. Um, so Zoro's left on the ship by himself, and uh, someone tries to kill him, but he blocks it. And it turns out to be uh, the Frankie family. Like, they're a gang of people who uh, rob from pirates and their bounty hunters. So they were trying to collect the bounty on Zoro. Zoro beats them very quickly, very easily, and goes back to sleep. Now, when Chopper, Chopper goes into a bookstore and Nico Robin is about to follow him there when someone with a mask passes by and says CP9 and then con, 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 con um, a bunch of times. So what happens is she disappears. And yeah, everybody's Sanji's kind of looking for her, trying to figure it out what it is, where'd she go? And he's also replaying the stuff that Admiral Okiji said about her betraying everybody that she's ever joined forces with. Okay, so Luffy, Nami, and Usopp get to this place and they meet the chief mechanic Keiku. And he goes, just jumps off the building. very fast, jumps very high, jumps very far, and then he kind of looks like Usopp, so everybody that sees him is like, what is Usopp doing? And then um, he comes back, and when he comes back, he lets them know, like, hey, there's nothing we can do for your ship because the keel is damaged, and, excuse me, there's no way we can make the same exact ship, and they also explain that uh, even if they could they're, even if they make in a, a ship that's identical to it, it's never going to be the same because every tree is different. So every piece of wood that goes into making the ship is going to be different. And the people that are going to feel that the most are the people who are used to the, how the ship was before and that would be Luffy and the crew. So there's, this is basically it for the Going Mary. I know it's very, very sad. Um, it's very sad for all of us. But the cool thing is they're gonna get a new ship, probably, and it's probably gonna be so much better because they're getting it from the top people and it has to be ready for the next part of the Grand Line, which is the hardest, roughest part, or the roughest part so far, from what I hear. Okay, so they meet up with Iceberg and Luffy's kinda like, you know, kinda disrespectful. You know, Luffy just speaks his mind. And his secretary, Karifa, just starts throwing kicks out there. She hits Usopp, Mrs. Luffy, Mrs. Nami and then hits Iceberg a bunch of times. So it's just funny that she just lashed out and then she kicked the person she defended. Plus Usopp, because Usopp gets the bad end of everything. As we find out, because while they're there, the Frankie group kidnaps him and um, 
they take two million berry and leave uh, two empty cases. So they take the two million and they take it back to their area. Around this time when they kidnap Usopp, um, world government officials show up, right? And they're basically like, oh snap, I smell pirates. Uh, the world government officer's name is Kouji, and he says he smells pirates, but then he's like, you know what, never mind, that's not important right now because I need to speak with you, Iceberg, you keep dodging me, and I need to speak with you. So now they have to have some type of serious conversation, and then uh, one of the mechanics is like, yo, Keiku, weren't you with that, uh, weren't you with the Franklin family earlier? He's like, yo, I haven't seen them all day, what are you talking about? And come to find out, he's like, oh, actually they were carrying you. It was Usopp who they were carrying, and they kidnapped Usopp with the 200 million berry. So they go to find Usopp, Luffy goes to try and find Usopp, uh, Nami goes to find him, and um, she finds him. Nami finds him laying down, beaten up pretty badly in the middle of the floor. Um, she leaves him there because there's nothing she can really do for him. She tells him not to worry about the money. She goes back to the ship to get, uh, get help, right? So she gets Chopper, Sanji, and Zoro, and then she stays on the ship and watches the 100 berry they have left. So, these three take off to go find Usopp. They don't find Usopp, but they find a trail of blood that leads them to the Frankie house, where they see Usopp outside laying down, beat up badly again, because he went to face off against the Frankies by himself. Now, they link up with Luffy, Luffy catches up to them, they go in the house, whoop the whole family, and then destroy the house only to find out that Frankie isn't there. Bruh. So now they're trying to come up with a plan to figure out how to find Frankie, how to get their money back, because they need the money in order to build a new ship that can handle this next rough part of the Grand Line. We'll find out in the next video, but let me catch you up on the short comments. Okay, so the Detsu is just pretty much having a lot of trouble in the blue scene. He's having trouble putting food in his mouth. Uh, he doesn't blink while he's working. You know, he always does that weird eye stuff. And then also, uh, he's doing a lot of digging and hard work. So what happens is he meets this uh, legendary creature pops up out of nowhere. And it's called a Suchi Banshu. And basically, the Suchi Banshu uh, is there. It's like a big giant mole. He hits it with a jet punch and kind of tames it. And then now, him and the digger he's working with use this Suchi Buku, the Suchi Banchu, to uh, dig for them. So now they don't have to do as much work. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite part of these 10 chapters were. The Grand Line is a rough place. You're gonna need a pirate crew. Why not the Wano Peace pirate crew? You can join by hitting that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching this one. Peace.